my friends and welcome back. Mr. A here. I took in one of my extra sheets of paper, one of my extra rectangles, and made me a new name tag for today's Computer Art Fun video. Do you like it? It has my blue truck on it. Do you still have your name tag that we made yesterday? Or did you make a new one like I did? Well, don't worry. I still have the one we made together yesterday, and I will keep it to wear in the future because it's extra special to me. You know why it's extra special? because it was the first one that we made together. Well, yesterday I promised you that you would get to meet one of my very best friends, and a little bit, you will. Before we get to meet him, though, I wanted to share some more information about computers and how they work. Did you know that everything any computer does has to be programmed before it'll do it? What does programmed or programming mean? That's just a big word that tells a computer what exactly it needs to do. Sometimes we also call this coding a computer. Can you think of a time when, may, when someone, maybe your parents or a teacher, has told you how to do something? Adults often call this instructions. Can you think of a time when you have been given instructions? I hope you followed them. Something like instructions on maybe how to tie your shoe, Or instructions on how to buckle your seat belt. That's a very important one. Or instructions on something as simple as how to properly make a bowl of cereal so you don't make a huge mess. Well, while we do not use a computer to tie our shoes or buckle our seat belts or make us a bowl of cereal, they do all kinds of amazing things, like allowing us to play games, read digital books, watch shows like this one, or talk with our family members or friends that live far away, and those that just live right across the street. Well, at some point, a person had to tell that computer how to do all those wonderful things by giving it instructions. In other words, that person had to code or program the computer on how to perform those activities. This person is called a programmer or a coder. Did you know that there are hundreds of thousands of coders across the world? And they all have a very important job to make sure our computers work. And guess what? Most of them make a lot of money from it. And they also enjoy it. Anyone can become a coder. It doesn't matter if you're a boy or a girl. It doesn't matter if your skin is white, black, brown, or any other color. It doesn't even matter if you have hair or not. What does matter is that you understand how a computer thinks and works and that you can give clear instructions to it. We're, we're going to help you understand how a computer thinks and works, and you'll learn a lot more about that in school. But I bet if you think about it, you're probably pretty good already at giving instructions. Let's play a game and find out. Here's a map of a neighborhood. And this is Mr. A's blue truck. Can you help me get to where I'm going? I need to go to school. First, let's talk about the instructions that you can give Mr. A's car. Or Mr. A's truck, actually, right? So, of course... We can tell Mr. A's truck to go forward, forward. See, the truck would go forward if we tell it to do that. We can also tell the truck to reverse. What do you think reverse means? Let's go backwards, right? Or back up, okay? We can tell the truck to turn left. Correct? Left. And then we can also tell the truck to, what do you think that means? Turn right, of course. And then I kind of wanted to have a little fun, so my truck has a horn built in it. Meep, meep. Does that sound kind of like Roadrunner? Meep, meep. Well, we'll see what that's used for in a little bit, okay? So let's put our instructions over here and let's talk about what instructions we need to get Mr. Owen's truck from here to school. 
Okay. Now, Mr. Owen's truck is going to go in whatever direction you tell it to until it hits a white line, one of these white dotted lines, or it gets to school, or it runs in a ditch, or encounters something else. So we're at home right now, and Mr. Owen's truck is pointed this way. I think, and we're not going to test it yet, but I think the first thing that we would need to do with Mr. Owen's truck is go forward. And I'm going to put my instructions over here so you can see them as we tell it what to do. So first thing we're going to do is go forward. At least I think so. Then I think we're going to turn right. Then I think we're probably going to have to go forward again. Okay. And let me rearrange these a little bit because that doesn't that doesn't look real good. Let's see. We're going to go forward, turn right. Then I said we'll go forward again. Then I think we're going to have to turn right again. Then I think we're going to go forward. And then I'm thinking we may need that horn. But we'll see. I think we'll need our horn. Then after we do our horn, I think we're going to need to go forward again. And this time, I think think we're going to turn left and then we're going to go forward again Let's see if I've got another forward over here about to run out of forwards that's all right we'll make one if we have to we'll go forward again and then I think we're going to turn right and then I think forward and if I have another one, yep, yeah, right there it is. I think that will get us to the school. Let's rearrange these and we'll find out. I'm going to pull my map up a little bit so you can see it and so we can follow our instructions. Can you still see it? Yeah, I'm pretty sure you can. Okay, so we've got everything where we can see it. I still see Mr. Owen's truck, and we're going to start going through the instructions. And we're going to start over here. Remember, Mr. Owen's truck is up here. And we go until we hit a white line or a ditch or something else that we're unexpecting. So we're going to go forward first. So I'm going to turn that over to say that we did it. So, so I had to stop because I came up against that white line there. And I said, turn right. Well, let's see if I put that the same direction as the truck. That means I'm going to turn this way. Okay, so I turn. So I'm done with that. Then I said I'm going to go forward again. Okay, so still good. Then I said I'm going to turn right. So if we look at that, then that means I'm going to turn the truck this way. And then it says I'm going to go forward again. Uh-oh. There's a cat in the middle of the road. I mean, we don't want to run over the cat. We want to try to make the cat move. Move, cat. Move. Uh-oh. Think this will help? Beep, beep. Meow. And the cat went home. So we honked our horns. Now then we can go forward again. See, we don't want to run into the ditch. Turn left. Let's see here. Is that correct? Yeah, I want to turn left. Then I need to go forward again. And remember, forward is looking at the truck. So even though my arrow is pointing that way, my truck's going this way because that's forward on the truck. So, okay. Now then, we're almost there. Oh no. What's going to happen? We'll turn right. Oh no, I'm scared. And four. I ran into the ditch. I didn't make it to school. So we have a problem somewhere in our code or in our instructions. Okay? I think it's right here. I 
think when we were here and we had just went forward, we turned right, but instead we should have what done what? That's right. That's correct. We should have turned left. Okay. Let's reset and let's try our instructions again now that we have changed that that we have changed our instructions we've cor hopefully corrected our mistake okay, i'm gonna go back take my truck back home he's a he's a flying truck okay so we flew it back home real quick okay and here are our new instructions so we'll go through these again forward oh reset the cat we'll reset the truck again so forward, turn right, forward, turn right, forward, don't want to hit the cat, but we can honk at me, me, and the cat runs away. Then we're going to go forward again. We're going to turn left. Yay. We're on track so far. Get it on track. <laughs> we're going to go forward. Oh, no. This is where we made a mistake last time. See if we fix it. Turn left. I think we fixed it. And then forward. And we're at school. Good job. Great job, y'all. Now, can you use the instructions that we have to get the truck back home? Can you think about that and do that on your own? Remember, we have forward. We have reverse, which we never actually use, but it is a it is a direction that we could use if we needed it. We have turn right, and we have turn left, and don't forget that we have honk in case we need to get that cat out of the road. Right? Okay. So pause the video here. Think about the instructions that you're going to use. Go back and watch me go through the just a little bit ago if you need some help. Write down your instructions. Write down forward, right, turn right, beep, or honk, or turn left. Write them down in order. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I'll give you a little hint. If you did it right, there's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven instructions, I'm pretty sure. So you'll need eleven instructions to get the truck from school back to home. I know you can do it. Good luck. Wow, that was fun, wasn't it? I told you that you were probably pretty good at giving instructions. Do you remember when we were going from home to school and my instructions were wrong? Remember that I told my truck to turn left, I think, instead of... No, I told it to turn right, and it was supposed to turn left, like I should have, and we ran into the ditch. Well, if this had been a computer program, we would have called that an error. An error is another word for mistake or wrong instruction. And guess what? This happens so often in programming and coding that we even have a fun name for it. What is that fun name, you ask? Well, I'm going to let someone else tell you. I'm going to introduce you to that friend that I've been telling you about. His name is Mr. Furnace. Mr. Furnace and I have worked together for a long time. Guess what? Before we were computer guys, we both taught math in school together. So Mr. Furnace is a pretty good friend. I bet you are also going to like him. Hello, everyone. My name is Jim Furnace. I am one of the computer science specialists for the state of Arkansas. So today my video is going to be about coding. And we're going to talk about coding that has bugs in it. Ugh. 
Now, we already know we don't like bugs in our cereal. We don't like bugs in our sandwich. And we really don't like bugs in our ice cream. Well, we also don't like bugs in our code. A bug in a code in the code is really just an error or a mistake or anything that prevents our code from doing what we want it to do. But if it is an error, then why do we call it a bug? Well, one story goes back to Grace Hopper in 1945. Grace was in the Navy and she was working on the Mark II computer when her team discovered a moth that had become stuck in one of the computer relays, causing the computer not to work. When her team members removed the moth, Grace taped the moth in her notebook and said her team had debugged the computer. So, although we don't actually find bugs in our code anymore today, we still use that word debug to mean we are looking for things that cause our code not to run correctly. So let me give you kind of a quick example. On my code here, I'm going to write print, and then I'm going to say, I love coding. But as you notice, I didn't spell print correctly, so when I hit the run button, yep, you guessed it. There is an error down here at the bottom. So because I got this error, my computer's not running correctly, my code's not running, I want to go back up here and debug my code. And if I do that and I spell print correctly the way it's supposed to be spelled, then when I run my code, I get I love coding. Very neat, isn't it? All right. So that's part of debugging, that's part of coding, that's part I really kind of like is looking for where I made my mistakes. And I will kind of leave you with a little bit of code that I put here. We will run it. And thanks for watching. Thanks Mr. Furnace. Wow, a bug! Who would have ever thought that we would call an error a bug? And did you hear Mr. Furnace mention Grace Hopper? Not only was Grace Hopper a computer programmer or coder for the Navy, she was also a female. That shows you that computer coding is something that everyone can do, no matter their race or their gender. Grace Hopper is so important to us, us computer people and computer programmers, that people like me all around the world celebrate her birthday every year by holding Computer Science Education Week. We hold Computer Science Education Week on the week in December that her birthday falls on. When is her birthday? Do you know? Well, I'll tell you. It's December 9th. When is your birthday? Well, I hope you have a great birthday this year. Well, that is all the time we have for today, friends. We will see you real soon on our next episode of Computers Are Fun. Bye. Bye.